Hello and welcome. I hope that you are having a fantastic day. This is Bitcoin News Today, and we're going to talk about China's Twitter and the regular U.S. Twitter are going viral with tweets about the Bitcoin halvening. Things are getting heated up. We're currently about 20 days out from the Bitcoin halvening, and that will have a dramatic effect for the next 18 to 24 months on the price of Bitcoin. So watch out world, here it comes. In today's video, Bitcoin is going viral on Chinese Twitter is a big boost ahead of the halvening. That'll be the first article that we look at. The second article is having mentioned spike on Twitter and in crypto media. Then we'll talk about an article on here's what's driving a Bitcoin buying frenzy among retail investors. And then the last one is demand for Bitcoin surges in Argentina as default looms. So let's get into it. Should you buy Bitcoin now or should you wait? We're going to help give you ideas to help you take profits and avoid losses. Can we get 99 likes on this video? Smash that like button. It really helps us out. Now, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This is my opinion. So, cryptocurrency. Currently, at this moment, it is 6.39 a.m. Central Standard Time on April 24th, 2020, and Bitcoin is hitting around $7,500. We had quite a large spike in the last 24 hours. It's up 5%. And as you can see, a lot of the cryptocurrency market is in the green. We do have a few that are highlighted in the red here. Um, but for the most part, most of the big ones are in green, as you can see by the size of their uh, boxes on this map. So the uh, Bitcoin is going viral on Chinese Twitter is a big boost ahead of the halvening. Data suggests that the hype around the Bitcoin halvening is on the rise and the crypto market stands to benefit from this trend. According to Molly, the former head of Bitcoin Magazine's China operation, the Chinese term for Bitcoin halving has recently gone viral on Weibo, also called China's Twitter. The topic was the sixth most searched term in the past 24 hours, showing real interest in the event despite China effectively banning the purchase of Bitcoin through the yuan, and the yuan is their version of of the dollar. So Google Trends data indicates last month that global searches, uh, global users searched Bitcoin having more than any month before, and that's any month in the history of Bitcoin. The search engine also projects that in April, Bitcoin having will be searched two times more than last month, which was already a new all-time high. So the article kind of switches topics really quickly. It starts out talking about uh, Weibo, which is kind of a Chinese version of Twitter. You can see a screenshot here, and this red line is highlighting that the Bitcoin halvening is listed as the sixth most popular search term on the Chinese Twitter app, Weibo. And, and then they switch topics and start talking about Google Trends. Now, if you're not familiar with Google Trends, Google Trends is where you can find out information about what search terms are uh, most popular on the Google search engine. So when you go to Google and you type in blah, 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 that gets, uh, they keep a record of that. And then you can go to Google Trends and find out if that search, you know, the phrase that you typed in, the search term, uh, is one of the ones that's being searched a lot or if it's not searched very often. So this bullet, this is bullish, uh, and they're referring to both Google Trends and the Chinese Weibo. This is bullish because it appears that a primary reason why the cryptocurrency market has been rallying as of late is due to the hype around the halvening. Indeed, according to Google data, the search terms buy Bitcoin and Bitcoin halving have trended in tandem since the year began, growing and shrinking in step. The correlation isn't perfect, but it's clear they're affecting each other. And so people are getting more and more interested, and it looks like the retail is 
uh, retail purchases, retail investing in Bitcoin is part of what's driving uh, the, the most recent rally that pushed it up to 7,500. And if that rally does continue, this may be part of the reason as to why. Now, they also go on um, and list out six other reasons why they think Bitcoin is uh, on an uptrend right now. And the reasons that they listed out is the launch of Facebook's crypto, Libra, is moving closer. So it sounds like Libra is still going to launch, even though it's had a lot of regulatory issues. So that could be a, a, a huge factor in what happens with cryptocurrency when Facebook, a platform with billion, I mean literally billions with a big B of users, starts having its own cryptocurrency. That, that could be huge, especially for Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. And then China is rolling out its own digital asset. China has made a lot of news over the last few months about them going into a testing phase where the public can start testing the China's digital coin. And then top markets are legalizing Bitcoin. So in India, South Korea, and Germany, they've all made rulings and legislation on crypto and blockchain showing that it supports innovation as long as it is within certain bounds. In fact, in Germany, where did it go? Right there. In Germany, if you have a bank account, you they can not only store, uh, I don't remember what dollar, I guess it would be the uh, European Union's dollar, would be, it would be what you would put in a bank account in Germany, but you can also uh, store Bitcoin. German banks have been now authorized to store Bitcoin in the bank accounts that people hold. And so, you know, that's a, that's a very positive sign for Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. And then finally, the Federal Reserve has activated quantitative easing infinity. In other words, as the U.S. Fed prints more money, it makes a stronger and stronger case for Bitcoin because as the, the value of the dollar begins to drop because of the amount of money in the market, uh, it makes Bitcoin more valuable because it's not affected by overprinting or over over inflating its uh, coins because Bitcoin has A, a set amount of coins and B, there's a fixed rate at which big, new Bitcoins are created and added into uh, the cryptocurrency market made available for use. So all good news. I thought this was quite interesting how uh, the Bitcoin happening is trending in China. Wow. Havening mentions spike on Twitter and crypto media. So it's not just in the country of China. It's really a global phenomenon right now. Globally, interest in the Bitcoin halvening is beginning to spike and peak as we approach the halvening in the next few weeks. Crypto social media chatter regarding the halvening spiked overnight after being overshadowed by gold in February and coronavirus in March. With less than three weeks until the halvening, the subject has overtaken the coronavirus as the leading Bitcoin narrative on Twitter. And it's once again starting to dominate the media's coverage. On April 23rd, crypto social sentiment analyst firm The Tie published data to Twitter showing that discussions concerning the halvening ranked as the ninth most discussed topic related to Bitcoin on Twitter with 650 tweets on the topic. Bitcoin discussions relating to gold, meanwhile, comprised 690 tweets. So having chatter spikes. However, the following day, the chatter nearly doubled to become the second most popular Bitcoin related topic on Twitter with 1,058 tweets, only trading, only hashtag trading, attracted a greater volume of discussions with 1,129 tweets, while gold moved down to ninth with 634 posts. So you can kind of see here in this chart that the red, red bar is coronavirus, the gold bar is gold, and the blue one is halvening, and you can kind of see how they've been trending. The halvening is starting to trend up and may overtake coronavirus as a topic on Twitter. 
What we can see is that the beginning of March, coronavirus became the dominant narrative mentioned alongside Bitcoin. But more recently, mentions of the coronavirus have started to fall as the happening has started to gain a ton of momentum. So all of this is good news as public interest and uh, public, you know, the public, general people, regular people are starting to turn their interest towards Bitcoin and the halvening and cryptocurrency. All that's going to do is actually increase, uh, you know, the amount of people who invest in it. So here's what's driving a Bitcoin buying frenzy amongst retail investors. Did you know that there was a buying frenzy of Bitcoin with retail investors? So on-chain data suggests the retail Bitcoin investors are currently engaged in a buying frenzy. This comes close on the heels of the crypto's terrifying plunge from 8,000 to 3,800, which has since been followed by an unwavering uptrend. The strength of Bitcoin has shown in the face of massive macro macroeconomic weakness may be bolstering investor sentiment. So the price action seen following this sell-off, however, seems to illuminate the strength of the digital asset, even leading one analyst to go as far as to say that Bitcoin is the most resilient asset in the world. So that's an interesting comment. And later in this article, he, the guy who said it kind of explains why he said it. And when I saw his reasoning, wow, it made sense to me. This overt resilience may be driving an ongoing buying frenzy that Bitcoin investors are currently engaged in as data suggests that BTC holders are accumulating at a rapid rate. They're accumulating Bitcoin and they're holding on to more and more of it. According to recent data from blockchain research platform Glassnode, Bitcoin investors are now including and accumulating the cryptocurrency at an unprecedented rate. While looking towards their HODLer net position change indicator, um, it appears that investors are increasing their Bitcoin exposure at the fastest rates seen this year. Bitcoin HODLer net position change has been growing daily since the end of March and is now hitting yearly highs. Long-term investors are increasing their positions and they're accumulating more Bitcoin each day, they noted while pointing to the chart below. So the chart below, this black line is the price of Bitcoin as it's gone along over, you know, from May of 2019 all the way to April of 2020. And you can see here in March, this was that huge dip. And the green indicates that people who have been holding Bitcoin for a while are adding to their wallets, to the Bitcoin addresses that they're holding uh, Bitcoin in. And the red indicates that they're spending the Bitcoin out of those addresses. And so you can see for the most part, you know, there was a peak here where they were spending a whole lot of Bitcoin uh, back in April of 2019. Um, but since then, they've continued to just increase the amount of Bitcoin that they actually are holding. And you can see this sudden spike of them accumulating more and more Bitcoin. They're adding their, their you know, the, uh, there's a common phrase in investing. Um, oh, come on. I, I just, it was on the tip of my tongue. Um, it's basically, I, I, for whatever reason, the name of the term is slipping my mind. But basically think of it like this. The, the idea is, is that you're going to invest a certain amount of money every week or every month or every day. You know, there's a periodic period that you pick. Um, but you add, you buy more and more of that asset on a regular, consistent basis. Um, boy, that irritates me that that phrase just has slipped my mind. It doesn't happen very often, but it did this morning. Anyway, um, that's what we're seeing Bitcoin investors, Bitcoin hodlers doing. They're they, they've decided that they're going to continue to buy more and more Bitcoin at this time. And that's why there's so much of this green on this chart. Because the only people this chart is measuring is people who have held on to Bitcoin uh, for at least a year or longer. And so those addresses are growing in the amount of Bitcoin that they actually contain. And so, hey, this is really good news. Demand for Bitcoin surges in Argentina as default looms. The country of Argentina 
is on the verge of defaulting on a lot of loans that have been made to the country. The volume of BTC in Argentina pesos has risen exponentially since the 2018 cryptocurrency crash as the country faces a possible default on $65 billion in foreign debt. The weekly volume of Bitcoin purchased in Argentina pesos has jumped 1,028% since January of 2018. However, the volume from BTC and USD has also shown substantial increases of 400% and 139% respectively. And so this chart here goes from January 18 to April of 2020. And you can see it, the chart shows you the weekly local Bitcoin volume in Argentina against the Argentina pesos. So local Bitcoins is a way that you can buy Bitcoin with somebody in your area. So you would go on to local Bitcoin and say, hey, I got $100 and I want to buy some Bitcoin. Who wants to sell it? Somebody else would say, hey, I want to sell it. And you would go and actually uh, uh, do the transaction face to face. You might meet at, say, Starbucks or something, get yourself a coffee. You would hand the person $100 and then he would transfer Bitcoin into your particular address. And so local Bitcoin is one way of purchasing Bitcoin, and it's often used a lot in countries where it's very difficult to set up a bank account and transfer uh, money directly into Bitcoin or a Bitcoin exchange. Um, Argentina apparently is one of those com countries where it's just easier to transact locally with people face to face rather than doing it electronically online at an exchange. And you can see, man, that volume just skyrockets, parabolic. It's a parabolic move. So the surge is happening as the government is about to default on its debt and the currency is suffering from inflation. The Argentine government has yet to put forward a way for the country to restructure roughly $65 billion in foreign debt, leading to a possible default. Buenos Aires missed schedule payments totaling $500 million on three foreign bonds on April 22nd, triggering a countdown to a formal default in mid-May. Argentina's financial crisis, in addition to global economic impact of the coronavirus, is in dire straits when compared to those in other countries, causing many worldwide to turn to crypto as a reliable asset uncorrelated with legacy markets. Any measures used to stabilize the Argentine economy can potentially cause deflation of the peso. The peso would become worth less and less and less, similar to what's happened in Venezuela. You know, Venezuela has gotten so bad that you thought you were working for enough money to pay your rent, and it turned out that you only made enough money in the last week to buy a loaf of bread. Um, and it's because the inflation has just been skyrocketing in, in Venezuela. Um, and so Argentina is looking like it's going to suffer a similar fate as the country is beginning to default on its loans. Not a good thing. So how can I be of service to you? Do you have any questions? Is there something that you want to talk about? Do you disagree with me? Look, you know things I don't know. I know things that you don't know. And when we share what we know... We're going to grow smarter together. I want to grow smarter together with you, so please share your polite disagreements in the comments section on the YouTube channel. In the meantime, like, subscribe, and hodl, and I hope that you have a fantastic day.